Alrighty. So next up is actually going over the new multi shader. So go ahead and uh, select your little cube here and tie it right into it. Collapse some of these back up. So in here, quick rundown. We have some performance options up here. Uh, in Maya texture size, you can see it's kind of blurry over there. Change it to higher res and get some sharper images out of it. Of course, it'll need away at memory and whatnot. So sometimes it's good just to leave it low, depending on what you need to do. So in the next section, material, we have material diffuse, specular, ambient, emittance, shininess, material alpha, and texture apply mode. Um, these are kind of like modifiers for the maps that we can put on later, or, you know, kind of general stuff. Like, I want something to be shiny. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and kick up the shininess a notch. And sort of a general kind of deal. Uh, geometry. Down here, uh, binaurals and tangents. Vertex colors uh, override default values. We can actually go in here and force certain vertex colors uh, based on either you know the maps or the actual changing of the uh, vertex color through the selection of each vertex. Uh, alpha transparency. We can choose to override the uh, blending and testing. The defaults anyway. Textures. This is where we get into. I guess what I consider the meat of, you know, texturing an object. Base map, you can call it a color map. You can call it a diffuse map. Uh, that's essentially what's going to be in here. Dark map, going to be shadow maps. So the detail map there, uh, this one will go ahead and add fine granular detail for when you're really close, when you're really far, the Cambria will no longer render it. Decal map one and decal map two, these are going to be projection sort of decals, emblems, things of that sort. Uh, blood, guts, whatever. Uh, glow map, self-illumination, incandescence, whatever you want to call it. That's uh, the same thing. Gloss map is going to be uh, a shiny map. And gloss map should also go in and apply the environment map. It's Environment map is sort of this cross between the specular channel and the environment map. They're merged in Gambrio. Bump map is not a normal map that comes next, but the bump map is the traditional bump mapping technique. Normal map, or normal maps, everybody loves normal maps. <clears throat> Parallax map, uh, go ahead and add in your height field data for the uh, normal map, and you'll get that nice effect for uh, occluding itself. And then we get down here into... Uh, yeep, yeep. So then we get down in here into uh, the Gambrio shader. Uh, so we have a bunch of stock kind of shaders. A lot of these were used in different uh, setups, uh, different demos. So some of these may not work properly because they're looking for you know specific altered render calls. But what can be done is if you write a shader, you can get it into this list. So all you have to do is be like, ah, oh, I want Gooch. And, okay, we're going to go ahead and select it. Hey, there are my Gooch settings, and we'll mess around with the Gooch settings, and then when we go actually view it, we'll uh, actually have the shader applied, and there's Gooch. That's what that does. And no extra adders. So that is the uh, new multi shader. Okay, so in this last little section here that I'll be going over in this set of videos, uh, we'll go into the uh, Gambrio buttons that are buried in the objects themselves. So in here, we can pull down and we'll see the descriptions for all these little buttons right here. So no stripify, create double-sided object, uh, create z-buffer properties, switch node, mesh hacking profile, keep object, create animation looping controls, create alternate bounding volumes, Mesh attributes and create sort adjust nodes. We're not going to really go over these right now. Uh, we'll go into these as necessary as we continue on through other videos. But be aware that they are here. If you want to look them up, you know, deeper in the the, uh, the documentation, hey, feel free. So that's those, and our lights have some extra ones as well. Create a quick point light. Hello, point light. We love you. And this icon is the same as the attenuation data icon up here, 
but they're not the same. So if we bring this up, we'll see that we do have the attenuation menu in here. However, we do not have all those nice, you know, range finding percentages. So that is there. But we also have the basic, you know, ambient color, specular color. We can adjust those. So shadowing. The um, three techniques we have available are the uh, standard shadow technique. This creates nice hard edged shadow maps. The PCF shadow technique will create softer edge shadows. And the VSM shadow technique is to be used in conjunction with other, with other shaders. Uh, and then we have static shadows, whether or not it calculates every frame or just one frame and then uses it over again. And then biases, back facing, force map size, we'll get into at a later time. To enable shadows, all we actually have to do is go down into the shadows parameters within here and say use depth map shadows and then set our resolution appropriately. Uh, I believe 2048 is the max, but it would be 4096. But I think if you go higher than that, you're actually going to run into memory issues. So just remember that, 2048. And that is essentially all the little hidden buttons through the object. So, all right, that's uh, bringing this first set of videos to a close. So I hope this was useful, and uh, next one up will be the um, max version of this. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.